Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an Indian survival drama film called Trapped. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Shorya is a call center employee living in Mumbai, India. He has had a crush on his co-worker, Nuri, for a long time. One day, he gathers enough courage to call her, but is too shy to express his feelings. But starting that day, he calls her daily and engages in an awkward conversation that Nuri seems to enjoy. She loves to flirt with Shorya and make him nervous, but is annoyed at the fact that he never asks her out. When he calls her the next time, she asks him to guess her favorite food in five seconds. If he guesses right, she will go out with him, but if he is wrong, she will stop picking up his calls. Although nervous, Shorya guesses correctly and lands a date with her. That evening, they go to a street vendor to eat her favorite food. Sometime later, they are in a restaurant talking about different things when Nuri casually mentions that she is getting married in two months. A surprised Shorya asks her if her marriage has been arranged by her parents. When she confirms this, he continues the conversation, ignoring the topic. That day marks the beginning of their friendship. Nuri starts to look forward to meeting him and hardly pays attention to work. They go on several dates and start falling in love with each other. One day, Shorya brings her to his apartment that he shares with three of his roommates. They lock themselves in his room and start making out. Nuri stops abruptly and is visibly upset thinking about her future. Shorya asks her to cancel the wedding and elope with him. At first, she thinks he is joking but starts to consider it when he insists. When she says that she cannot live with his roommate, he promises to find a new apartment by tomorrow and move in with her. Her wedding is in only two days, so they will have to be quick. Right after she leaves, Shorya calls several dealers to look for an appropriate apartment. However, because of the timing and low budget, he cannot find one. He spends the entire day visiting apartment complexes with little to no progress. During one of such meetings, a stranger overhears him talking about wanting an affordable place. He approaches Shorya, saying that he has a perfect place for him. Shorya is skeptical at first, but he agrees to come have a look at the apartment anyway. He is brought to a newly built high-rise apartment complex that seems to be way more expensive than what he can afford. He is told that the complex was built two years ago, but is empty due to construction and legal issues. The apartment that he is being offered belongs to a man who hardly ever comes to the place. The stranger he just met is only a caretaker of the place, but since the owner has been absent for two years, he is unethically handing it to Shorya for money. The couple will be the only people living in the massive building, which unsettles Shorya. But when he gets a look at the apartment, he forgets about all the sketchy things related to it. It is massive, with a bedroom, a kitchen, a living area, a bathroom, and a fenced balcony. The place is clearly worth way more than the price he is paying. He finalizes the deal and gets the keys to the place. Following that, he packs up his luggage from his old place, but doesn't tell his roommates about his plans to elope. He simply claims that he is going home for a few days and leaves. Anyone that's had roommates before knows that this is a dick move. At his new apartment, he lays down a mattress, cleans the room a little, and falls asleep, hoping to surprise Nuri the next day. He has put his phone on a charger, but the power cuts off. The following morning, he wakes up late and quickly does his morning routine. He further notices that none of the taps are working and has to use bottled water to brush his teeth. After a few minutes, he finally steps out of the apartment and locks it. However, he has to run inside again to get his phone. He forgets to get the keys and accidentally locks himself inside. Nuri calls him and asks him why he is late. Shorya explains that he will be there in a few minutes, but doesn't tell her where he is to keep it a surprise. Wow, at this point, Shorya deserves to be trapped. When the call ends and he tries to get out, he realizes that he is in trouble. He forcefully tries to open the lock, but fails. He finds some tools in the drawers and uses them, but without the keys, opening it seems almost impossible. Following that, he calls a helpline, asking them to send someone to break the lock. But to his misfortune, his phone dies before he can tell them the address. He tries to charge it again, but the power outage only makes it more difficult. Shorya gets more irritated with time and starts to bang on the door to break it, but is unsuccessful yet again. Moreover, he hurts his hand in the process. 
Moments later, he comes to the balcony and calls the watchman, who cannot hear him because of the traffic and the height. Shoya finally registers that he is stuck in the apartment. His plan to elope with Nuri has failed because she will probably think he has run away, afraid of commitment. He cleans the wound with the little bottled water he has left. In hopes of charging his phone's battery, he keeps it out in the sun, but it does nothing. Following that, he continues shouting for help. Hours pass, but no one hears him. At night, he eats a packet of biscuits and falls asleep. When he wakes up the following morning, the power is still out and the taps aren't working either. He yet again tries to open the door with everything he has in the house. Even after throwing a chair and a fan at it, it doesn't budge. Shoria is now ready to take extreme measures to get out. He unplugs the TV mounted on the wall and throws it off the balcony. It lands below with a loud bang, but the watchman still doesn't notice it. Later, he eats away all the biscuits and is left with little to no water. He notices several pieces of cardboard on top of the kitchen shelf and thinks of a plan. Using his toothpaste, he writes help and the name of the building on them and drops it off the balcony. To his dismay, the cardboard lands on someone's roof where no one is going to find it. Shoria is useless, but he doesn't lose hope and does the same with another piece of cardboard that lands on another building's roof. When he runs out of toothpaste, he uses his blood to write the message and drops two more cardboards off the balcony. One of them lands directly below the building, while the other one lands on someone's terrace. He stays on the balcony, waiting for someone to find them and look for him. In the evening, a woman comes to the terrace to pick up clothes that had been drying in the sun. Shoya gets up and starts yelling at her, but is disappointed when she doesn't notice the cardboard. At night, he goes to the kitchen and sees that he is completely out of food. He also notices a rat on the floor and is terrified. While trying to run away from it, he hits his head on the wall and falls unconscious. Shoya now officially has my vote for the Darwin Award. The next morning, he wakes up still on the floor. He sees that the tap in the kitchen sink is working, but he is too scared to go inside because of the rat. Soon, it runs out of water and he is left disappointed. He had broken his glasses last night, so he fixes them with a pajama string. In another attempt to make someone see him, he builds a makeshift slingshot and uses it to launch pebbles at the woman on the top of the roof. The pebbles catch her attention, but she ignores them after seeing no one around. Another day passes in a similar way. At night, Shoya uses his clothes to write help on the balcony's bar and starts banging the bars with a pan. He does it until the morning, but no one hears him. The watchman finally finds the cardboard he had thrown, but the guy cannot read, so he ignores it. Later, the woman from the nearby house also finds her cardboard. She looks around but cannot see Shoya from that height. He yells for help, trying to get her attention, and is overjoyed when he sees her coming to the apartment complex. The woman asks the watchman if anyone stays there. The man claims that he has worked there for two years and is positive no one is in the building. The woman is still not satisfied, so she goes up several floors. However, the empty place spooks her, so she returns home. Shoya sees her leaving and loses the last speck of hope he had. When it turns dark, he burns the clothes that were hung on the bars. When that starts to blow out, he also lights the mattress on fire. He jumps up and down, sure that the fire is bound to get someone's attention. However, the plan goes wrong when the fire spreads to a couch. He somehow blows it out with his vest and falls asleep. Out of hunger, he dreams of eating his favorite meal with Nuri like they used to. He also remembers the survival shows that teach you to eat anything once you become deserted. Taking the advice, he goes to the kitchen to kill the rat, but freaks out when it runs towards him. The next day, thirst gets the better of him, so he reluctantly pees into a pan and drinks it. However, the taste makes him vomit right after. He spends the entire day sleeping and wakes up the next morning to heavy rainfall. Shoya quickly collects water in the pan and drinks from it. He also uses everything that is a container to collect as much water as he can, including the fridge, the flush tank, and the paint cans. The next morning, a pigeon lands on the balcony. With his only chance, Shoya uses the slingshot to kill it and use it as food. However, when he tries to skin it, he is disgusted. A flashback shows us the time he and Nuri were out on a date. Shoya, who has been a vegetarian his entire life, argues that killing helpless animals for food is unethical. Back in the present, he reluctantly cuts the bird's head off and roasts it. He also gets over his fear of rats and manages to trap it. 
When the isolation gets the best of him, he talks to the rat about all the ways he can escape. He has seen that an apartment some floors below him doesn't have bars on the balcony. If he manages to get to the apartment and the door is open, he could walk right out of it. However, for that, he has to cut the bars off of his balcony first. The only tool he has is a metal sheet, but he starts sawing it anyway. Several days pass, but he doesn't give up trying to cut it. He feeds on ants, cockroaches, and occasional birds. When things get tough, he starts to miss the little things he used to dread, like getting pushed by sweaty people on the bus. Weird fetish, but okay. After many days of sawing and burning the railing, it finally breaks. Shorya takes the chance and carefully climbs down the bars of three floors. When he finally gets to the one with no bars, his legs are too short to climb in. He uses his belt for support and finally gets inside. With much courage, he pulls the door to the apartment and is overjoyed when it happens to be open. He climbs down the stairs and finally makes eye contact with the watchman. He has a hundred things he wants to say to him, but he simply walks away. A week later, Nuri comes to visit him in the hospital. She believed that he had abandoned her and has already gotten married. He tries to hold her hand, but she moves it, knowing that they cannot be together now. Some days later, Shorya returns to work, but is shattered to see that his friends and colleagues had not even noticed his absence. Later that day, he goes to his favorite restaurant and enjoys his favorite food that he missed dearly. In the final scene, he returns to the apartment and looks at the broken bar. The moral of this story is, uh, I give up. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.